Scott, I'm going to make this video for you regarding uh, working on a kana blade. A lot of your kana blade work is going to be uh, uro dashi and uro oshi. I've already done uro oshi, and I did uro dashi the other day. For uro oshi, I have a dedicated Japanese natural that I use, and I only use it for the back of the kana blade, the uro side. So this is. Uh, pretty much ready to go and I have uh, this is a number 600 Atoma plate and you can use this to flatten your bevels when they need it this one's pretty much prepped up so I'll set that aside next I would go to uh, a Shafton I have a 500 grit here, or I, I could actually go, I'm sorry, I would go to a little bit finer grit, like a 1200 Atoma. Do a certain number of strokes so that you're maintaining your flat bevel, but at the same time replacing those uh, number 600 um, grit scratches. Then I would go to uh, 500. You may have some of these same stones or an equivalent. And on this chapter, I'm going to remove the, uh, the previous scratches from the diamond plate. And I like to alternate my hand position because uh, with a forward pressure, forward stroke, you get a little extra draw on the front of the blade where the leading edge. So if you flip it over and do uh, the opposite, it helps to balance the edge. Of course, all of this you probably already know, but you asked me for a video. Okay, so that, there's your five. Then I would probably go to uh, um, have a Shapton. I could do a King 100. Same basic idea. You're essentially just going through a progression of grits. Focusing on the edge, on the hard steel, try to feel that hog and I touching the stone. Of course, you, this is your, this is an abbreviated session here, but you're going to go through the, all these grits one by one. Here's a, a 2,000 grit. So, most of your Real bevel um, formation is done on these lower end grits. Could do, you know, three or four minutes on a lot of these stones instead of just the 20 seconds that I'm doing. This is just to get you off the ground here. And some people do side sharpening, I don't. And I like straight on sharpening also for the final passes. Okay, so we got, and you may have an 8K or a, a 10K or whatever you have. This is a Naniwa, this is a 16K or 15K. And you're going to want to work up. If you only have the Tomae, you're going to work, want to work up through 8 or 10K, maybe 16, you don't need to. Because the, uh, the Tomae is going to do a lot of this work by itself.
Okay, so you've gone through probably two or three other synthetic stones. Like I said, a, an 8 or a 10 or 12, whatever you have. And then we're going to pull out the uh, Asagi stone. This is from Narutaki. Uh, she Soho Nyama Awasido. Basically, it's um, uh, original Honyama stone. So, there's a. We can wear out this stamp if you want. It doesn't matter that much to me. This Shei Honyama stamp we might want to uh, preserve. But what I do, um, once you start to get a, a better polish on your blade with the synthetics, then when you go to the natural stones, I like to use a number 1200 diamond plate or a worn out Atoma uh, number 600. And you can raise a slurry on your, um, on your Awase dough. Awasi is natural sharpening stone. And that gives you a real powerful grit component here. I don't know if you can see how uh, this slurry's developed. Pretty dark already in this area here. Guess you don't really need light. And this supercharged slurry made from the base stone. Just really, you can see the, the black developing the swarf. And if you focus on the edge, rather than the jigane, you're gonna be forming the edge as you go along here. There's another way to do this, and I'll include um, an, another nagara. We call the diamond plate a diamond nagra. This is a piece of uh, Mikawa nagra. And you can use this as a slurry stone. And this will cut a lot of steel too. It encourages some grit particles to be released from the base stone. But also the nagra does provide some, uh, some grit of itself that can cut steel. But you can see it doesn't have that dramatic swarf creation that the diamond nagara, when you start using the um, all the grit from the base stone. So you have, in this case, a diamond nagara, a mikawa nagara, and also there's going to be um, a piece of tomonagra, which is a similar, this is not cut from this stone. It's just a similar stone that matches up and you can use this to create a slurry component. And for most people, this is going to be your final alternate grit source. And you'll be finishing on just the awase dough for the remainder of your of your edge formation. But you can see this when you use a tomonaga you're getting some slurry from the base stone and then some slurry is from the tomo. And that combination uh, you wanna customize for your for your particular stone and also the kind of blades that you're using. So you get down here and you, you start to get black swarf going. Just maintain, uh, you know, uh, keep looking at your at your bevels. Make sure you got that um, the jigane and the and the hagane contrasting with each other. And look at the edge from the uh, you know you you know all this stuff. So then um, eventually we're gonna go to just clear water on this. Asagi, and depending on your skill, you should be able to do some final passes that are just clear only.
clear water and you want to really focus in on the edge at this stage and get that real close companionship between the stone and the steel. This can get a little jumpy because there's some suction developing between the stone and the steel. If that happens you can go just go backwards a little bit and continue the stroke like this. The slurry helps to it's not truly lubrication, but it does add an element of easier to use flexibility when you have a slurry on the stone. The blade doesn't get sucked into the stone so deeply and you have a, you can get a little bit smoother stroke. You can try to hone a little bit faster too, but towards the very end you want to really get that that really tight relationship between the stone and the steel. So you get to this stage and of course you have uh, some kind of lapping plate. Um, I have my my dedicated uh, stone for the back of my razor or back of my um, kind of blades and I keep this very flat. I don't use it for chisels or anything else only for the early side of my cona blades. And here again, you can raise a slurry using a tomanagra. And basically you're looking at just a whisper on the early side to remove that, um, that uh, wire edge there. And I'll give you one tip that I find is very useful. Um, everyone's concerned about um, deepening or the landing or widening the Mimi here so that you end up with and this is a 75 year old blade but um, it and there's not much left to it but you can see how the, the Mimi have worn out here on your landing. It's just uh, irregularly shaped. Of course, you don't want to end up with something like that. You want to maintain your, your Ura profile with a very narrow landing there. And I found uh, <coughs> one um, helper for maintaining that is you buy um, a roll of this Kapton tape. This is, it comes in different widths and it's a wear resistant tape, much more so than any other tape you're going to find. And I recommend putting a layer, leave yourself about a centimeter between the edge and the front of the tape. And if you have a brand new or newly uh, created uh, Ura, use a couple pieces of tape and this way when you go to your your lapping plate this elevates the edge just to it's so little but it focuses all the cutting energy right on the very edge there and instead of lifting the blade this you lay the blade flat on the on your stone. Again focusing all your energy right at the very edge. And this will help you to create and maintain that very narrow landing there. And then of course go back to your awase dough. Uh, do a few more passes and wear off that wire edge or it's called a false edge or a feather edge. In Japan uh, craftspeople who are dealing with 
tools that have a ura and on the back of their their tools or their razors. They usually spend about 80% of the time to 90% of the time on the omote side. And on the ura side, 10%. Just to, you want maybe 10 strokes on the omote or more. And then be real stingy about going to the ura side for, for the ura oshi. And you want light strokes too. You don't need these full sweeping. Just um, maintain a good eye on your on your edge, see how it develops. And you're going to wear off that wire edge rather than breaking off. Okay, so that's basically how to use this natural stone. Get your synthetics, do a full progression, spend as much time as you need. And then once you go to your natural stone, that's going to take your 8K, 10, 12, 15K edge and just give it that little extra oomph. What you're, what you're looking for, what I'm looking for is that when you do go to your natural stone, uh, you want to get some, you want to get into some depth of the, of the blade here. So your synthetics create this beautiful surface uh, on, the, on your Kana blade. But then when you go to your natural, you want to you want to get your um, edge development deeper into the steel. You want to remove all the uh, surface that was affected by the synthetics. And you want to get deeper down into the blade. So you do have to spend some time. And with the Nagra or a diamond plate, you can get a lot of work done. I've done all this in just a few minutes, but really, I think you're looking to spend maybe even up to five minutes with your awase dough, your natural stone here, and really developing that edge so it's a real Japanese natural stone edge, not the synthetic. And you want to get in, you know, half a micron deep into that steel so that you're reaching virgin steel steel that hasn't been touched by the synthetic and that way the character of your Japanese uh, edge will be from the stone will be uh, a little bit more suited for your kana and it'll be longer lasting for your for your um, planing. You can turn your stone around doesn't matter but I always like to keep my stones balanced somewhat so that um, as the stones wear and eventually these um, stamps are going to be worn off. You can do that, I'll do it, it doesn't matter, but um, you're going to try to get into, uh, you know, using the full stone. It, professional sharpeners in Japan, they concentrate on the corners and the ends. get both ends cooking so that any wear pattern is really uh, spread around and it means less lapping time on the stone. So you want to cover all the corners two minutes here, two minutes there, two minutes there and eventually you get into the middle. The middle sort of wears out by itself as you're going along but you'll have some nice strokes in, in the middle there too. So that's basically it. Eventually you're going to end up with a really nice sharp blade that will cut wood for longer and longer times than it did with your synthetics. And the beauty of these um, Wasido stones is they carry away a lot of the swore from the Jigane. All this raw iron back here needs to be washed off the stone as you're working on it. And the slurry does that. So that's that's one reason why these uh, Awase Do's and the Kana are so paired up like they are. Okay, that's the end of this video.